Hi chums. Okay, um, number 43, Sarpo Mira. And here we are, 43 Sarpo Mira, and they're mine. And they're too large, and they've got Murphy's Compost with Spuds Galore and Blood Fish and Bone. So see how these do. I uh, haven't been down much, as you've noticed, because I've been really, really busy. Um, with a bit of a bit of a sad, sadness going on in the family at the moment. Um, one of my aunts is very ill, so we're running up to see her and stuff, you know, and I could sad, you know, but it's only, I think it's only 73, but um, she's in a wonderful, wonderful care home at the moment, in a, 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 a care village, they call it, in Belfast, and it's absolutely beautiful, and she's getting fantastic care, and she also, she's a nurse, so she worked there voluntarily after, after she retired, so she's kind of... They're all looking after her really specially because she's one of them, if you like, you know. But she's not getting any more treatment than somebody who wasn't. But they always think they're just doing that. They're just making sure she's really, 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 really okay, you know. So that's that. You need a lot of running about. So I need to get some of these out because I've noticed that the ones up in the house had started to... Um, see this? The, pla the plastic is starting to go get those on these bags. I'm not be using these again. I'll not be using these particular ones. The actual bags. The actual bags are very good. Well, this is two large potatoes I had in there. What do you see? And it's looking pretty good already. Where's me pigging? Me pigging? Oh no! Ah! Oh, here we are. It's full of water. Full of water. There you go. Um. What do you call it? Water. Your wee Cooper holds water as well. That's a that's a testament to your the quality of your work. Here, not much wrong with those. So the last video I did was about some of the stuff happened in Belfast when I was a student. But there's some funny stuff, you know, went on as well. There's one, one there, what's this thing, one there now, coming down. Look at that there, it's a kind of a gnawed looking thing there, isn't it? It's maybe been crushed by other potatoes as it was growing or something, you know. Bit of a gnawed ball looking thing. But I was thinking of a story one time, there's a friend of mine, um, We'll call him, well, well, my mate is actually called Paul, right, so that's okay, but another guy, we'll call him Damien, right, came to Paul's to get his car fixed, and Damien was a brave sort of, he could be a brave, brave stubborn sort of boy, you know, so, road checks, right, how did road checks work, the road checks generally was set up by the British Army, or the Ulster Defence Regiment, or the police, and the way, what it was, how they worked it was, they blocked the road on each, it's a two, two lane carriageway, so they blocked the road on each side, and as you approached the the, the security check, the, a soldier up from the jeep, so 50 metres from the jeep or 50 yards from the jeep would stop you, or the policeman or whatever soldier, and would ask for identification. If everything was okay, or he thought everything was okay, they just waved you through the checkpoint. Happy days. And that's what I always liked. So I didn't give these boys any shit, you know, at all. And... You know, the, the, the downside was that when they look at your name and address and saw where you were coming from, or you had to tell them where you were coming from, where you were going to, and you would tell them, and they'd say, right, maybe there's an incident in that area that you were coming from or going to within the previous couple of days. So they'd pull you in behind the Jeep and give you a good going over and search your car and search you maybe and check all your details. But there was always a guy up at the Jeep who would be checking your registration to make sure the name you gave was tallied with the car and one of the things he also always asked was your name and your registration number because they were wanting to see were you driving a stolen car because a lot of stolen cars were used in bombings and, and shootings and stuff so that was one of the things so people used to write their registration number on their steering wheel so they so in case they couldn't remember it you know if you couldn't remember your steer, your registration that meant you were held up at the road checks but anyway um, we were, uh, and one night uh, Paul was fixing a guy's car, Damien's car, and we decided to get some parts, and we had to go into Lurgan. And we had to go through a, a pretty Republican area, and there was a road check as we went in through, as usual. And we had pulled up, and then it was our turn. There was, I was in the front with, with Paul, and Damien was in the back. And they said, as Paul was driving, what's your name, Paul Mack? Have you any ID? Yeah, and Paul gave his driving license out. That's okay. The soldier looked over at me in the passenger seat and said, What's your name? I said, Brendan Mack. Okay, have you any ID? And I, lucky enough, I have a driving license on me. 
So I gave him a driving license, that was grand, everything else, super. We thought, hey, no problem here. Now we were going to a parts shop to get parts just before it closed. It was actually closed, but we knew the owner was in it until about eight o'clock, and this was about 10 to 10 to eight. And we were about like 60 meters from the shop, you know, in the town. So, uh, and it was for your man, Damien's car, it was for his car, it wasn't for, for another, it was for his own, for his own car. So the soldier looks into the back of the car and he says to Damien, what's your name? He says, I'm not telling you. Well, I looked at Paul and our hearts fell because we just looked at each other and thought, we're going to be here all night because of this bollocks, you know. And the soldier says, what do you mean you're not telling me? He says, I'm not telling you because you stopped me at 10 past 11 here this morning. And you asked me my name, my address, and I gave you my ID and I got waved through. So I'm not giving it to you again because you obviously aren't doing your job right if you can't remember who you stopped. Now this soldier might stop a couple of hundred people in a day, you know. And the soldier says, well look, it was a long time ago, it was over like this, eight hours, this is eight o'clock at night and he would stop at 11 o'clock in the morning, so we're talking nine hours later. It was a long time ago, I can't remember everybody. So could I see some ID? And Damien goes, no, I'm not giving you ID. I've already shown my ID. And there's no law in this country that requires me to show my ID twice in one day. So then the dreaded words were spoken. Just pull in behind the jeep, please. <laughs> so I looked at Paul. I mean, this is this bollocks is going to cause a whole fucking commotion here. So that was fair enough. Off we went to the in behind the jeep. I'm going to take my wee pig and out because I haven't enough room for the spuds. And in behind the jeep, and the soldier comes over and says, "Right, what's your name, please?" And your man, Damien. No, nope, not telling you. You don't. If you don't remember from this morning, it's not my job to do your job for you. Um, this was like this was not helping matters, you know. So the soldier says, "Right," and he went away, and he came back again. And he said, "Right," he said. My, my, my senior, the senior officer wants to know your name. And Damien says, that's fair enough. You tell him. You know my name because I told you this morning. So you go back and tell your senior officer who I am. Or do you want me to tell him that you're not doing your job properly? So the soldier went off again. And I thought to myself, we're going to end up in one of the barracks. They're going to say, right boys, into the back of the jeep. Um, we'll take you up for interrogation somewhere. And that wasn't a very sort of help. That wasn't the best thing that ever happened, you know. So the next thing I saw, we saw two soldiers talking, and this boy walks down. And he says, "Good evening, gentlemen." And good evening, and you know, I was very polite, and so was Paul, because we did not want to spend the night in jail or something, you know, or in a barracks getting fucking t interrogated, you know. So uh, he says, "Yes, sir, there seems to be a problem." And Damien goes, yes, there certainly is. This man isn't doing his job properly. What, what do you mean, sir? He said, I told him my name, address, and showed him my identification this morning. And he doesn't know who I am now. He's not doing his job properly. And it's not my responsibility to make up for the fact he's not doing his job. And the senior guy says, and he said, who are you? <laughs> and the guy said, I'm the commanding officer in charge of this checkpoint. Right. So do you condone the fact that your men don't do their job properly? Well, maybe they all do, except this one. Are you going to cover up to the fact that he will not do his job properly? It's not my fault that he won't. It's on and on and on. So that was it. Next thing, right, boys, out of the car, please. Oh, Jesus, here we go. Into the back of the Jeep, it'll be the next thing, and the next thing, people will be going around town. Here, fucking Paul and Brenton and Damien were lifted at a checkpoint today, you know? And we just didn't need that crack, you know, because there's people walking up and down the street and everything, you know. So the next thing we were starting outside the car and they searched us and they searched the car and they did everything and then they came back to Damien. Right, would you tell us your name please? No. I've already done it already today and I'm not going to do it. You are responsible for doing you are responsible for doing your job right, and I'm not going to do your job for you. So the soldier went over and they talked among themselves for a while and they looked in one thing and another. And he came back, and he's right. Go on ahead, we're not going to keep you any longer here. And I thought, oh my, I felt like kissing him. <laughs> I thought, this is brilliant. I was going to come back and say, right, boys, into the jeep, you know. So that was it. 
and we got away, we, we got through the checkpoint because I think they realised that they were going to be there all night with this boy, you know. So we got through and we managed to get to the shop to get the parts and things again. So that was fair enough. We went down the road about five, a couple of hundred metres from the shop, turned the car into the shop, got the parts we needed, out of the car and the, wasn't the road check still there. So we pull up the road check and remember we're on the other side of the road this time so it was different soldiers stopping us. Soldier stops us. Hello, what's your name? Paul, Mac, have you any idea? Yeah. He looked at me and before he looked at me, this boy shouted down, I let that car through. <laughs> so, so what do you call it? They let us through without right, even looking at us, you know. But that's that was one of the things that was kind of bizarre, you know. But there were people, I don't think I'd have been brave enough to do that actually, you know, because I'd have been scared of getting taken off to a barracks or something and fucking tortured you know, or interrogated with big lights and things you know I've never been interrogated so I don't really know what goes on you know but uh, that was just one of the situations that we got into with a guy who would not give in you know and there were a whole lot of boys I got here I can tell you but the other one but as a young fellow we used to go down to Monaghan across the border from Armagh because it wasn't really safe to go out at home you know so we used to go down there to the dances and stuff you know and the rule was that we were all, we were all young fellows, we were all like in our late teens and just we were doing our A-levels in school, the final year in school. We were all driving and the rule was that one person took, the, took their dad's car. We see, you know, it's not like America here where young people have cars when they're 16. We can't afford cars when we're 16 because they're so bloody expensive, you know. So we got our dad's car and there's one driver, he stayed sober that night and then the next four weeks he got to be a passenger in the other cars and he got drinking and the driver didn't drink but the problem was see the night you were sitting drunk and all and there was a big road check at Middletown where we went through to go to Monaghan and the boys used to get drunk and they would start carrying on the road check and the soldiers would get us out of the car and search us especially in the rain you always got taken out of the car if you started being a smart arse you always got taken out in the rain because they didn't care they were getting wet anyway you know and the driver was always miserable because both the four boys that were half drunk or pretty drunk were having a great time laughing and carrying on and keeping playing jokes and things. And it was, a, it was a risky thing to do, but I think the soldiers knew they were all were just a bunch of dickheads, you know, <laughs> and let us through. But there was always some sort of stall where you had to suffer for the, on the week you were driving. You had to suffer because of your mates. But then you got revenge the next week when you did the same on them, you know. But the road checks could have been good fun times, you know. Sometimes they weren't very good fun when you were taken out of the car and got the wheels taken off your car and stuff, you know. That happened a couple of times to me. They jacked the car up and started taking, taking it apart, basically, you know. But, um, other than that there, it was, it was pretty straightforward. But of all the road checks I've been through, I think that the one that, <laughs> the worst one was the one with Damien. Where he refused to tell them what was going on. Or tell them, well, he refused to tell them his name. Now these are two Sarpo Mira. And I think they're my own Sarpo Mira. And I think I've done pretty well. I think I've done pretty well here. What do you think of that there, boys and girls? <laughs> right, let's get these into the bag and weigh them. I'm gonna to have to start getting get in here and do a bit more work. Um I'm having a bit of trouble with my leg at the moment. My hip my right my left knee is really bad at the moment. And it doesn't normally happen, but I got injected. I got the, the, the right knee injected about two years ago, and they said to me, Look, do you want to do the left knee at the same time? And I said, No, don't. Um, it's, it's not that sore. Wait till it gets really sore, and then we'll do it so to get the benefit of it. So that was about two years ago, and for some reason, it's just taken off the last couple of days, and it's really, really sore. I think we're up now. I'm going to go for 12 pounds here, guys. Right, we'll see you now. Get my gloves off because I have to move the camera and I don't like getting my camera dirty because it's not fair. Oh, I'm not going to buy a new camera, folks, because I was looking there. Some people sent me a message saying, look, we're in dial up here and we're out in, the, out in the sticks in America and high speed hasn't reached out here yet because it's not economical to bring it out. So we're watching uh, 360 and 480 and I think these are done in 480 and it's just good enough for us. So rather than make you wait, everybody it's not on high speed, wait for ages to, for the things to render. I'll just keep a stick and stay with this here and then it'll mean everybody gets the thing done a bit quicker. And the quality, sir, it's not as if I'm doing cinematic quality for, for TV or something, you know. Right, what do I see now? 
move that over there. I've got this in a slightly different position today, and it seems to have worked. Whatever way I've set that up, it seems to have worked out all right. Right, here we are. This looks like I've got a, a new battery in, in my scale, so maybe get more weight from the spot tonight. <laughs> right, what have we seen? Oh, God. Hello. I'm going to go for it. What did I say there? 12 pounds? I'm going for 12 pounds. And we're on pounds there. Look at that, 12.1 pounds. What about that? What's that going to be? 5.3 kilos or something would that be? 5.5 kilos. I'm really, really happy with that. That's a Sarpo Mira. Sarpo Mira are brilliant spud. They really are. And they're, they're a nice spud to bake or to chip or to mash or to boil. They, they do really well, you know. I'm very happy with that. So I'll leave it at that, folks. And... We'll get something else sorted out. Um, what was I going to say either? I just want to get that pulled back again. That rope is going the wrong direction. I don't know where that's going to be. Probably be, probably right about there. Maybe I think. I don't know if that's too tall or too small. See what like here. Oh, it worked out all right. Um, oh shit. I was going to say yeah. I'll do some more reveals later. I just want to get back to the house today because my legs killing me. I want to get it. The worst thing you can do is sit down and not exercise it, but it's so bloody sore I'm going to have to sit down and not exercise it, you know. But anyway, I'll get out later on and do a bit more now and I'll get some more of these spuds out because I noticed that in the house, the ones that were in the drawer had started to put shoots out. Now, the house is pretty warm, you know. Actually, it's not that warm. We keep our house in around about 63, 64. That's about 21, 22 centigrade because we don't really like a really hot house. We'd prefer to have a house where we're not sort of pulling our jumpers off to try to keep cool, you know. There's no point in overheating the house. So over the years, we have just found this sort of nice medium in around about 61, 62, 63, in around that. And it works out dead on, you know. So it means it looks very economical to heat the house. But that house isn't hard to heat anyway. And since I did all the work on the house as well, it's been brilliant, you know. So, um, excuse me. I didn't want you to see the drip on my nose there. Um, it's not as cold today. It was pretty cold the last few days. It's not as cold today. It's around about, um, it's about 7 degrees today. What's that in? Around 40, 45 or something like that there, you know? Maybe less. I don't know what it is. Anyway, um, that's it. I'll see you later, folks, and we'll do some more reviews later on. All the best now. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.